In my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart, especially you. No. Sayori rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. S someone's gonna kiss in this. I'm, I'm determined to make it happen. I know I have absolutely no agency here, but I'm gonna make someone kiss. Hello and welcome back to Mr. Red Play's Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, it's later in the day, the same day that I recorded the last episode. I actually recorded that in the morning. It is now a much more reasonable time. It's uh, later in the day. Now, this might be the actual first normal episode of Doki Doki Literature Club uh, to date, because the first one that I put out, uh, I recorded it at the same time I usually do, but my fiancé was here uh, in the house, and usually I'm by myself when I do this, it just makes it a little easier. Uh, she was here, which was fine, but she's not here now, uh, which makes me sad, because I love her. But uh, the other episodes that I've done have been in the mornings, and now this is my normal time. I'm much more of a night owl, so I just get more uh, amped up uh, later in the day than in the morning. Uh, I'm also, as such, not uh, drinking coffee this time, because you drink coffee, right, and it's not good for you. Especially not later in the day. You have too much caffeine. It's a problem. So I'm not drinking coffee. Uh, I'm drinking tea. It's delicious. It's caffeinated. Uh, and I know <clears throat> that I said in the last one that what I was going to do is wait until I get to the very end to do all the uh, extra stuff. And I will, but I also want to look this up because I feel like... Oh, itching my nose again. We did this one and it was a huge information dump. So I want to look at the other one. I believe it was in poem notes. Poem words, rather. Also, I should go through this again and make sure that I have everything. Because it, it said check for anomalies, and I did find an anomaly uh, here, 915, 130. It's going to be 914. I got to hurry. So 130. Uh, I feel like I want, these two are at least are easy, um, and I'll be able to find them okay. By the way, it says help, press help key to, uh, to something. I don't know what the help key is. I tried pressing start and select or options or whatever the hell they call it these days. And uh, to no avail. So let's go to 130. All right, it's meeting notes two. Can't open it yet. Uh, but these two we have access to. We know about them. And the rest of them, because I looked through, there's like five or six of these files or something. Uh, I don't know what like what time associates with them. So I will just have to find out if I can find them later on. Uh, here we go, 915. Meeting notes two. Lib, which could mean library. It could also be the person, Lib, who's working on the team. Promising work on recording simulation activity into playable script. Interesting. Playable equals observable form, not a game. Stay focused, Ive. Uh, okay, interesting. Pretending to type important things while waiting for everyone to get back on topic. 4.30, still target end time. Hmm. Assigning names to simulated entities for easier reference. Good idea. A, B, C, D should suffice. One, two, three. Uh, using real names only encourages us treating them like pets rather than simulated entities. Everyone is trying to come up with stupid names now. So, okay, meeting notes, that makes sense. He's in a meeting, and he's just, like, typing down uh, what 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 everybody is, is talking about. Control simulation, create identical VM without entity A having elevate... I'm assuming that's Monica. Having elevated access permissions. Seems unlikely. Nothing has come close so far. Clone VM1, same elevated access, but prevent the entity from discovering it. Seems tricky, but plausible. Meeting over time again. <laughs> okay, so they didn't hit their 4.30 uh, still target time. All right, so is 4.30 another time? Was it one, two, three, question mark? That I don't get because A, B, C, D are the names of the entities. One, two, three. It would be one, two, three, four if it were referring to the entities. So maybe let's try this. One, two, three. Track six name ideas. Yeah. Uh, 4.30. I'm going to set it to 4.30 and do this. 4.29. Here we go. All right, I press like every button for help key. Nothing happened. Okay. One, two, three. I guess now that I think about it, I always do have, I'm always like sitting here waiting. So that means I do have time to get to this point when the game starts, but it's fine. 
Uh, Operation Not a Game by Ive Laster. Control Simulation wor Track 6, Name Ideas. Work Together, Discussion Time, Debate Time, Brainstorm. Listen up. Teamwork Time, Let's Discuss, Let's Teamwork. I'll Handle It. Leader, Take the Lead. Text Face Names, maybe for another track. Ooh. ooh. All right, I don't know. I don't know why uh, this is happening. Uh, track six name ideas. W what is track six? That's got to be the music, right? Poem Panic. So this is the song uh, when Yuri and Natsuki are fighting. Um, so I'm looking through these times as well. I'm trying to find anything that'll help me. And uh, some of them look like they could lead places. Like they're all the the four one zero. But I don't know what to do with any of that. I didn't happen to take a screenshot of that file, and I I, I don't think I have access to it anymore. Yeah. So, uh, maybe oh maybe ten thirty six a.m. I feel like that's just when I uh like started this new this game because it was on that date, and they're all. They're all that date, so that time, I don't know. Like, look at this. These are essentially uh, itch achievements. In Act 1, attempt to load a save file after Sayori's death. Now, I, like, if I weren't trying to get all of these, I might not have, like, done that. Which means, what else don't I know to do? I don't know. Hey, what if we tried to... I bet there's one for deleting Monica, because there's a weird thing that happens where if you try to delete Monica before... The game actually starts like early on uh it'll do something weird so i bet that's another way of getting an unlockable here anyway i was just looking through the pictures all right i guess it's time to do the side story uh so we have understanding respect balance reflection and self-love uh i guess we got it uh, we're going in order i don't know if this is the order i unlocked them in or if this is supposed to be the order this really does feel like the beginning because uh, you had Monica and Sayori starting the, the literature club. So, there you go. Here we go! We're doing this one. Here we are, we're back in the club room. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door caught- Oh, see? This is a continuation. It must be in order. That's good. Uh, causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside, a face that seems familiar. It's Yuri! Didn't I say it was Yuri? I said it was Yuri. <clears throat> Nobody says anything. <laughs> Nobody says anything. As Sayori's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She is very cons She very conspicuously mouths to Monica. Oh, hey, I wasn't, <laughs> I was being conspicuous. It's true, the girl standing in the, <laughs> it's true. Sayori's not wrong about this. The girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had come across reading alone in a classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she's found her way to the club. And this is the first flyer too. It's the, uh, the one that uh, they at first did, that one. Uh, are you here for the, are you here for the literature club by any chance? Mm, okay, a Yuri voice. Let's let's come up with the Yuri voice. Uh, am I, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Sayori continues to fail, containing her excitement. It's happening! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for coming in. Sorry, it's a little empty. I'm um Peter, and this is Peter. And we run the literature club, even though it's just us so far, but what's your name anyway? I'd like to join your club. Already? Wait, really? Are you serious? I, I mean, I should be good enough. Ha ha ha. Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh. Um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. Well, so what's your name? Yuri. I'm Sayori, and this is Monica. Sayori, uh, M Peter, I <laughs> already. Nice to meet you. Nice to, <clears throat> nice to meet you. Um, 
Do you like fantasy? Like books? Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Yes. Have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? I can't say I have. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. I'm on her fifth book, and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. You can borrow my books. I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um, Monica Stammer is caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. I'm the president now. Monica goes flying out the window. Uh, she glances sideways at Sayori, silently asking for help. These people are weird. I'd love to. It sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid. I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Oh, who said that first thing? Hold on. Yuri says both these things. So, Sayori, it sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh. I'm so stupid. I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Oh, oh, oh. Get them for Sayori because she's... She, oh, because she wants... Yeah, she was going to show them off. I don't know why that took me so long to figure out. I thought she was saying... I thought somebody else said I left my books. And Yuri was like, I'll go get them for you. Which even that doesn't make sense because like, I'll go to your locker and get your books for you that you left. Oh, well. These things happen. Uh, Sayori says, you probably only need to bring one for now. Sayori nervously says that, noting to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri sat down on her desk. All right. This is the perfect opportunity to talk and note that, yes, we've all seen Game Theory. We've all watched it about DDLC, um, the original one. I assume there's probably going to be more uh, Game Theories based on the plus. I'm talking about the original game. Um... And in that uh, video that MatPat put out, the theory was about Yuri's book, the Portrait of Markov or the Eye of Markov or something, that um, friggin' the game that Monica was originally a part of. Now, it does seem to be that all of this virtual machine talk is uh, hinting outside of that. Like, I think that's not no longer where we're, our minds are at now because of this. But it is interesting to point out and bring up. Um, and this book, I don't. we should probably pay attention to it. I'm assuming that it's going to be uh, relevant. True. Okay. I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. Here, take my glance. Call back to last episode. Oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. She is so beautiful. How do I handle someone so intense? I have, like, no experience with theater, except maybe stuff that I read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat that we have different people who are into different kinds of literature, just as long as we don't get any filthy manga lo <laughs> lovers in the class. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but what if this is her... Only interest. Doesn't it kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. Good idea, let's be happy. I'm excited to get to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being- It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. <laughs> what the heck? It's kind of scary I can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah, hey, you know what? You're, pro you're probably great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her. I need a break from you, Sayori. Yay, that's exactly what I want to do. Besides, Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. What? She taps her finger. Oh, <laughs> she taps her finger against the dauntingly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. Aha! Yuri's return. It's right there. <laughs> what a weird way of saying that. Um, 
I'm back. Her breath is slightly heavy, which, combined with her short time gone, indicates that she may have ran at least part of the way. I'm back. She makes her way back to Sayori, over to back to Sayori, back over to Sayori, and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori field, feared, the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal in size to the one already on Yuri's desk. Well, well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Um, Sayori nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking maybe today we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I, I think, like, if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Sayori. Well, Yuri isn't looking. Oh, okay. Yuri sits down, then looks at her book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So... What made you decide you wanted to join the club? Well, 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 well. I like reading, so I was immediately interested. I had no idea someone was starting a literature club, but that's my fault, since I haven't been paying attention to any of the club rec recruitment advertisements. I only find out because she... Yuri glances over at Monica. Monica. Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly, Yuri's face darkens, and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid. I got too nervous and I couldn't even look up, so she just walked out. It took me several days to come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but I decided that was probably irrational. Wait, what? No, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. I was actually really hoping you would come by. Yuri exhales in relief. Woo! I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well. I was really nervous to come here for some other reasons, too, such as there being too many people. Luckily, that's not the case because you people suck and there's not enough of you. Not that I mind that much, but I really have a hard time me having to meet a large number of Hinu people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. And then Natsuki shows up and she's like, I was hoping for a club with only three people in it. It's perfect. Ah, that makes me happy. I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. She holds up a mirror and she's like, good me. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same things as I am, except online. So I thought the literature club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kinds of other things are you into? Like genres? I don't know, just anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things you would think are dumb. Sayori pauses, a look of concern on her face. How about, how about, I'll tell you something I'm into, and then you can tell me about something you're into. I suppose that would be okay. Okay, well, I'm pretty into, like, crafty things. Like, making cute little collages or decorating things. Like cards, or jewelry boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff. Oh. I forgot I wasn't actually, I, I was going to try to go to the um, the pictures and, and show off the, there's one about uh, Sayori's room and I wanted to go there because that'd be funny, but I forgot I wasn't, you can't hit home and go to the, pay, the desktop, which is kind of what I was thinking. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I get buying things to make gifts for my friends, but then I put it off until the last minute. <laughs> so yeah, that's something kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much. It's just that you'd be surprised by how much you can do with skizzers and glue and stuff. So I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Sayori nods. Um, knives. Well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature. Monica, I'm going to start a nature club. Bye. <laughs> she kicks the door open and runs out. <laughs> no, you, no, you're, no, you're not. You're stuck here with me now. I am not. Oh, yeah. That was really weird. Anyway, I hereby appoint you as vice president of the literature club. There. Now you're stuck with me. Hey! Don't give me responsibilities. Oh. I'm sorry, Yuri. I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fu- It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward about having gotten cut off. I like going out into the woods or to the park. Just places where you can walk or sit and not have any people around. I hate people. It's peaceful. Just nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously for a while. 
When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow, I feel like I never would have the time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do, Monica, if you don't let it slip through your fingers. The three continue their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica chiming in every now and then. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, it looks like we should be wrapping up for today. Whoops. So, are you going to be starting on that book the next club meeting? That's the plan. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Sayori beams. Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the club room. Sayori, you are a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. It really fe it feels really nice when I can put my energy towards other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting the book with her ne with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. I dropped my controller. This read like the um, uh, friggin' uh, Pokemon announcer. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems everyone, like everyone has their spirits lifted with something to, new to look forward to. Only he could speak properly. All right, we're fading out. Is that the end or is it the next day? It's the next day. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. That's weird, usually Monica's there. It's club time again. Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Yuri silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. Hmm? <laughs> Sayori tilts her head, unsure of exactly what Yuri is talking about. Well, I mean, the way I got overly excited to share my books, and how you had to stop me so we could talk first, it was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so... <laughs> Yuri, you did nothing wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Well, still, I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Huh? Why? Because... I know that you were just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But if you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club so you don't have to so try so hard to entice me. Ugh! Shoves her. That's not what I was doing. A moment of uncomfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Oh no. Um. Well, the thing is, we don't have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have been just working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So, it just sounded like something fun that we could do together. Reading your books. You know, like as a club activity. That would be okay, right? Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place. And you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. <laughs> she slides a sheet of paper that says, I just want to die. <laughs> there, we're opening up to each other. Mm. Sayori pulls her desk up against Yuri's and sits next to her. Sorry I keep itching my head. I'm a very itchy boy. The book in question is already on Yuri's desks. Peering over, Sayori reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell, part one of the Everlast Saga. Aha, it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle. Sorry, I'm ready now. Oh, right. I should get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Oh, it's useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees, or just for taking notes. Notes? I, I mean, yes, that's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it will be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Sayori's joke flew completely over Yuri's head. But thinking about it, she decides it's probably the for the best that it did. Well, 
I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try to help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're like super smart. No, please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. I don't like how close Yuri and Monica's voices are. Maybe got to figure something out there. All right, so she's like a huge nerd. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. This is a lot like Natsuki's voice, but I might give her a different one just because like we haven't really met her yet. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent so far here. So, in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No. Sayori rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. S Someone's gonna kiss in this. I'm, I'm determined to make it happen. I know I have absolutely no agency here, but I'm gonna make someone kiss. Anyway, uh, anyway, would you like to get started? <laughs> okay. After the minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. Yuri begins to guide Sayori through the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, the factions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Sayori seems to have. It's like Game of Thrones, but despite Sayori's expectations, Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way that's such that it's fun to follow along. It becomes evident that the world building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is one that Yuri finds her passion leaning towards. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I do. What kind of writing? Oh, like poetry and stuff like that. The things I write are just putting down the feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. Ah, you're into poetry? I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way. <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Sayori's heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. <laughs> they haven't started? Okay, but I can't read. Very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Hmm. I see. Siori jots, <laughs> Yuri is patient into her notes. Um, I saw that. Hey, that's for the book, Yassi. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, well, okay. But I'm kind of glad you're patient because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. Sayori flips through the first pages of the book, getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one. The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read in utter silence, apparently. But the silence only lasts for a moment before Sayori speaks up again. What does vindicated mean? Ah, uh, well, in this context, it essentially means he was proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course, Sayori turns the page. Are these footnotes? Hmm, a lot of the dial, a lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanation to be understood. This does seem like an intense book. Mmm, the two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions had been reversed with Sayori easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Barnes is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayori rubs her temples. The two of them continue, with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes, and she finds herself refer referring to them sometimes, some and even adding to them. But her reduction in questions comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. Ah, uh, I've been there before. At last, Sayori reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop hearing it for now. Okay. Sayori takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So, what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sayori tries to find words. There's one! Am I doing well so far? Hmm? I am not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> Good stuff. But I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and keep doing my best so I can see it the way that you do. The relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. 
Yuri quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses, then shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore, that's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. Oh no, you weren't making me. Oh no, Sayori's left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. It's the only thing I'm good at, and I still messed it up. What if she doesn't want me to come? What, what, what if she doesn't want to come back? Drowning guilt, Sayori stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, that she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Ah, this is horrible. Was it really because I thought she w I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough? I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, she would be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Oh no, poor Sayori. Okay, it looks like we got some more stuff. We got more mail, pictures, and music. We'll explore it all in the next episode. Guys, thanks for watching. Tune in in two days for more exciting Doki Doki Literature Club adventures. I'm Mr. Red, your host. You're the audience. Uh, and I hope to see you again. Until then, thanks for watching. I've been Mr. Red. Stay spooky out there, everybody. And remember, keep watching.